Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about what's called the extensor tendon zones. So here we're referring to muscles whose muscle bellies are actually in the posterior compartment of the forearm, but their tendons extend across the wrist into the hand to exert various functions there. So this picture down here on the bottom right, uh, everything's upside down here, but I did it to actually give you an orientation for this picture over here on the left. This picture over here we used in a previous video when we talked about the anatomy and contents of the carpal tunnel. So over here where I'm outlining with my mouse, this is the carpal tunnel. Again, the roof of it right here, now it's upside down. Here's the transverse carpal ligament. And it turns the carpal arch here that's formed through these carpal bones into a tunnel. And there's various structures that exist within there. And those are for mainly flexors, but the extensors are gonna exist on the opposite side of the carpals. So if you're looking at the orientation of this hand, the bottom part here is the palmar aspect. So up here on the top would be the dorsal aspect. Okay, now again, you can see the bones over here. Uh, we've got the triquetrum here, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. And then dorsal to that, we have this gray tissue right here, which is very similar to the flexor retinaculum, of which the transverse carpal ligament's a part. Uh, this is the extensor retinaculum. Now, in contrast to the flexor retinaculum, uh, the extensor retinaculum actually has the tendons go through it. Okay, if you look at the carpal tunnel, uh, the flexor retinaculum here actually just covers uh, the tendons, more or less. But the tendons here actually penetrate right through that extensor retinaculum. And so the purpose of these extensor tendon zones is basically just to anatomically divide up various tendons into different regions. Okay, um, again, when we're looking at this cross section, this is a little bit more distal to where this cross section is taken, because here we see the radius and the ulna, but again, uh, the regions are going to be the same. And there are six extensor tendon zones. Uh, zone one over here is closest to the thumb side. You can see these two tendons right here. Those are the same two over here. Again, those two are gonna be lateral to the radius, but as they go distally, they're gonna cross lateral to this bone, which is the trapezium. Over here, closer to the ulnar side, or the, the little digit side, uh, we see one tendon right here. This is the sixth extensor tendon zone. You can see here that proximally it's going to go over the ulna, but distally over here, you can see the same tendon. It's going to be passing uh, medially, and actually dorsal medially, to the triquetrum bone. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's go back over here and start at the first extensor zone and work our way medially and get to the sixth over here at the pinky side. So the first zone has two tendons. These are the tendons of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. Again, you can see those two tendons right here. This first one, abductor pollicis longus. This one is extensor pollicis brevis. Again, remember abductor pollicis longus is going to abduct the thumb and extensor pollicis brevis is going to extend the thumb. What you can see here is that both of these tendons are going to act on the thumb, which makes sense because they're closest to the first digit. Now next I want to talk about both zones two and three collectively. Okay, So right here, this cross section is before we get to the wrist because this is the radius and the ulna. Okay, So right here we have in zone two, extensor carpi radialis longus, and here is extensor carpi radialis brevis. Recall that the longus is going to insert on the base of the second metacarpal, whereas the brevis here is going to insert at the base of the third metacarpal. So it makes sense that the brevis is actually a little bit more medial to the longus. And then on the radius, we have this bony protrusion right here called Lister's tubercle. So if you take your hand and turn it palm facing down, so dorsal side is facing up, and you go to the radius, your thumb side, just before you get to the wrist and go about one third of the way over, you should be able to feel a bump there. That is Lister's tubercle. You'll notice here that this tubercle uh, separates the second zone from the third. What's in the third is extensor pollicis longus, and the second zone are these two muscles. Now, if we go over here to this picture, we're a little bit more distal, right? 
uh, because we're actually crossing right through the carpal. So we're no longer in the radius and the ulnar regions. These three tendons right here, these are the tendons of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis and extensor pollicis longus. However, their orientation might surprise you. Over here, before we cross the wrist joint, extensor pollicis longus is a little bit more medial. But over here, this one right where my mouse is, the most lateral one is actually extensor pollicis longus. And so what happens is, is actually once you cross the wrist joint, uh, the tendon of extensor pollicis longus crosses uh, these two tendons for extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. And why would that make sense? Because extensor pollicis longus needs to get to the thumb. The thumb's all the way over here, so the tendon of extensor pollicis longus better uh, cross over that of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. And so if you look really carefully where my mouse is, this one where my mouse is would be longus, and the one medial to that over here would be brevis. Okay, but again, zone two, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, zone three, extensor pollicis longus. Now, the fourth zone, pretty straightforward. It has extensor digitorum tendons and extensor indicus. Now, here you see that zone four, uh, event, again, very similar to what we see over here on the left cross section. Uh, the superficial tendons are extensor digitorum. Notice this one right here where my mouse is, that for extensor indicus is deep to that of extensor digitorum. Now, extensor digitorum is sending tendons to digits two, three, four, and five, but again, extensor indicus is only going to the index finger, and that's digit two. That brings us over here to zone number five, extensor digiti minimi. That's the only one in the fifth zone. Now you'll notice in the radio ulnar cross section right here before we cross the wrist joint, the extensor digiti minimi tendon is actually between the radius and the ulna. When we look at this cross section over here, which is a little bit more distal, uh, you can see here the extensor digiti minimi tendon is roughly between the hamate bone and the triquetrum. So it's roughly in this area over here. And then the final zone we have, extensor zone number six over here, again proximal to the wrist, we see extensor carpi ulnaris is the only tendon there, and it's really contained completely within this groove of the ulna. If we go more distally and look at this cross section here where my mouse is, that's the tendon of extensor carpi ulnaris. Again, it's pretty much dorsal and medial to the triquetrum. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, one more thing to discuss before we conclude the video. Again, notice that as compared to the carpal tunnel where these tendons are just kind of sandwiched underneath the flexor retinaculum, uh, these tendons in the extensor zones are actually housed within the extensor retinaculum. And so again, this extensor retinaculum not only serves to protect the tendons, but just like for the flexor tendons, it acts to prevent bow stringing. So for example, when you go into wrist extension, if these were not contained within that extensor retinaculum, all of those tendons would bow out. But again, that doesn't happen because they're contained within that extensor retinaculum and therefore protected. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the extensor tendon zones. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.